Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I will be doing another Kismet video showing you how to make a simplified version of the uh, combination lock from Dishonored um, or any other game. Um, it's simplified in the way that I only have four sides to my uh, meshes I suppose. They're just made from brushes and then converted into meshes so that I'm able to rotate them. Um, so I've done a bit of preparing. Again, I have this sort of blue box here. It's just six walls and a light. I have the uh, three up arrows, which will be increasing the number on the spinners. And I have the three down arrows. And then I have the uh, sort of door here, which is just uh, to be that once you get the right combination, this door is supposed to open. Um, so so I've done some preparing in Kismet as well. Um, I have the um, the three separate attached to actor here. This is just the uh, the spinner actors are uh, attached to the door, which means that once the door moves, the spinners move with them. Then I have three different um, global variables here number one, number two, number three, which is just to represent the value of the spinners. So three different ints. Uh, and here is basically where I'm going to start. Um, what we'll be working with today is mostly matinee, as well as some uh, basic math in Kismet, basically. Um, checking the, uh, the numbers and stuff like that. So what we want to do is one up, uh, I'm not sure how well you can read it, but here it says one up, which means when the one uh, up arrow takes damage. Again, I'm using take damage instead of uh, use because it's more obvious in the videos. Uh, so when it takes damage, you want to play a matinee. And matinee is uh, used for all of the animation done in real time in UDK, pretty much. Sure, you can import uh, straight animated objects as well, but this is good enough for today. So, what you want to do is, when that takes damage, you want to go into matinee here. Um, you will always have to add a new group to be able to do anything in Kismet. So just add a new empty group, call it rotate, and in this we want to add a new movement track because movement is what we're going to be using for everything today. So you get a new line and you also get um, a keyframe here which is the default starting position. Uh, so what you do to do anything in matinee is that you move the time slider here at the bottom. It starts all the way to the left so you can't really see it. But once you start dragging, you will see the timeline and the slider here at the bottom. So what you do is you go to second one, or close enough. I have it snapped to one up here, so it will snap to one. Uh, you press enter and you get a new red triangle, which means that you have another key. If you see it here in the bottom, you can see adjust key movement one, which means that uh, you change the value of the second key by rotating it forward 90 degrees. So you can see number two here. And then what you can do is you can scrub between the two different values. So you can see you're going from one to two. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to reduce the time of the matinee. As you can see, it always starts at five. You want to pull it down to just one. This means that um, the matinee is considered finished once it reaches 1 instead of going all the way to 5, which means that we can play another matinee um, after 1 second instead of waiting in the full 5 seconds. If you're doing longer matinees, you obviously increase the time. Um, but this is enough for now. Um, what we're also going to do once we close this matinee, uh, and as you can see here, once we've uh, added data to the matinee, it gets a plugin that plugs in an object, which is the uh, the rotating object here. 
uh, as you can see it's interp actor 2 um, and we're also going to change some values on the matinee here uh, I'll slide it in uh, what we want to change is two flags uh, rewind on play which means that once you've played it you can play the exact same animation again without having to uh, reverse the matinee basically so if we jump into the game now and just keep shooting the arrows or the the first arrow here that actually does something you would go from one to two over and over again so the next thing we want to change is no reset on rewind here this means that instead of going from one to two every time you play it it will go from one to two, two to three, uh, three to four basically just rotating it 90 degrees every time if you did the original 10 uh, 10 number spinners you would have to change it by 36 degrees every spin so it would work exactly the same you would just have different numbers um, and once this is completed what you want to do is you want to increase the the number one variable so that's what we're going to do next uh, math add int you want to add number one and a new variable which is just one and then what you want to do oh wait we can change it it looks nicer this way and then plug that number into number one um, and then we're going to have some uh, just a little bit of magic here um, you can uh, I'm going to copy paste all of this later to the other spinners as well so I'm just going to add another stuff first which is a uh, new condition comparison compare it um, we don't want these uh, so what we want to do is if the number one number is bigger than four int four oops I could just copy the other one oh well if it's bigger than four what you want to do is set it to four set uh, new action set variable int uh, I'm getting out of the screen here so I'm just saying what I'm doing if it's bigger than uh, 4 if a is bigger for the value of 1 basically what this means is that instead of going from 4 to 5 when you're adding here you go from 4 to 5 and then you uh, you check it so if it ever reaches 5 you want it to go to 1 instead um, so again if you're doing the 10 sided spinners you just change this to 10 instead um, so that's basically it if it ever goes to 5 you go back to 1 instead so then we copy paste this data down here uh, we remove all the number ones oops autosave and we uh, change it to number twos instead whoops not all of that just copy paste this one and then we change the interp actor as well because we obviously don't want to change the first spinner when we shoot the second arrow we want to change the second spinner and again since the matinee is only adding 90 degrees to an existing object it doesn't matter you don't have to redo all of your matinees when you uh, change it if you want to see how it works you just go in here and you slide this so you can see it's the right object and it does the same animation uh, we have the interpector we have number two that should be working then we copy paste again I could just fast forward through this but I'm just going to show you this one time I can fast forward when I'm doing the bottom ones because they're obviously going to use the same system so new object variable 
you change the number twos to number threes. Hello. And there we have it. That should actually be working. So let's try it here. And I've actually found the play in viewport button now. So I'm just going to show you here instead. And there you have it. One, two, three. And boom. They're all working. Um, so we go back into Kismet. Uh, that should probably be it for the first ones. Um, the second uh, part here is obviously the down arrows. But what we want to do is use the same, uh, basically the same uh, things as we've done here. So I can basically just copy paste all of this. Um, we will obviously have to change the matinees and we will have to do some changes to the logic over here. Um, so instead what we want to do is we want to play it and we want to go from uh, instead of spinning this way we want to spin the other way. So we basically just uh, we don't have to change the first frame because that's obviously where it starts. So instead of going to 2 on the second frame, we will want to go to 4. So you can see 1, 4, 1, 4. And that's basically it. So out here, play. And then we c copy this matinee. Whoops, we have to copy the orange one also. So we copy the matinee and the matinee data, as you can see what it says on the... Um, boom, and boom, and remove that. And then we copy paste this down here, plug in the interpreters and the completed ones. And again, as I showed you in the last Kismet video, I've gone in and changed the damage threshold to one. Uh, I might be outside the screen here, but damage threshold to one, trigger count zero. And I have trigger delay on one here just because the matinees are one second long. And I don't want the player to be able to start again uh, before they're actually finished. And instead of add int, what we want is subtract action math uh, subtract int. So we want to subtract. Um, we can't actually do them in that order here because subtract runs in another order. So you want to subtract one from number one and then we'll have to cross the lines here. It doesn't really matter, but I'm pretty sure this is the uh, the order it runs in. Adding doesn't matter because you can have, uh, have them in any order, just like multiply. But divide and subtract uh, starts with the first number. Uh, and instead of having the bigger than 4 here, what we want to do is smaller than 1. And what we want to do is set it to 4. So, so you want it to go 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 4. So if it's ever smaller than B or A is smaller than 1, set it to 4. Um, oh, fuck it. I'll just move this over here. Think, whoops. Yeah, what you saw there is if you alt click, you get the red thingy, which is uh, basically stop, or it's a debug mode, which means that uh, once you get to that point in the while playing it in the game, you you can stop and run through your kismet. But we're not going to be using that today. I'll just use alt click to. Oops, I didn't mean to remove that. To um, unhook the nodes. So what we'll be doing is moving that here and that here. So we're plugging in number two, exactly the same one as number one, the same way. And here, uh, number two, nope, number three.
So obviously we can't check if these numbers are working at the moment because the animations will play regardless of what happens with this because the matinee just spins the actor regardless of what happens to the logic here. So this is just uh, in preparation of the comparison I'll be doing later. Um, as you can see, these should all be moving. One to four, four to three. Yep, they're all playing. So that's just the matinee bit. It's actually working as it is. But what we want to happen is that um, once we get to uh, once we play an animation, we want to see if the uh, if the combination is correct. So what we want to do, I'll be using another thing right now, which is um, new event activate remote event. Uh, this is just to make the uh, make the kismet look better, basically, because otherwise it will be all over the place. And I'll be using the same thing for all of the uh, all the events. Uh, let's see here, new new event, remote event. And just like uh, global variables, uh, default events use uh, names. So let's just say, let's just say this one is called comparison. And then what we want to do is we want to name this one comparison as well. Um, why is this not... This one is okay because you see uh, it has a green check mark on it which means it's it should be working. I think this one should be green as well but I don't know. This one actually starts out with max trigger count 0 and trigger delay uh, 0 as well. This is fine because we're not ever going to get here uh, except through the other triggers. Um, so we'll just copy paste this one. Every time an animation is finished we want to do the comparison. Uh, there will be a lot of copy pasting in this video. But that's just how it is. So once we get to this one we want to move up to the... Oh, now it's green as well. Uh, comparison. And here what we'll be doing is just checking um, new condition, comparison, compare int, and we want to hide all the outputs except for the correct ones. Hide output. So let's just say we want the combination to be 3 to 4, uh, which will unlock the, whoops, unlock the safe here. So number 1, number 2, and number 3. Um, we can't use the uh, the comparison with that checks for all of the uh, the three uh, which I don't really remember what it's called but there is one that checks for three different things to happen excuse me and we can't use that because that means that as soon as you reach the uh, let's say as soon as number one reaches three, it will activate that input, or as soon as number two reaches um, two, it will activate the input. Uh, we want to check it every time. So as soon as number one is, what do we say, three, we do three, it checks the next one, which should be two, whoops, autosave. Um, I could have just gone with the ones just to see if it works, but now we're doing this. 3, 2, 4. That's the correct combination. And what we want to do when this happens is we want to play a matinee on uh, this object, which is supposed to be the door. So again, new empty group, rotate, new movement track. This item, the one key is the starting position and then the second one is uh, let's rotate it 22 and a half degrees. Um, it's going into the wall but obviously 
the pivot point for this one is pretty weird for what I'm doing with it, but let's just say it's like that. So it rotates, boom. That's just to show that we have the correct combination. So we go to play, play rate one. Yeah, we don't have to change anything on this one. We'll only be doing this once, so we're not resetting it or anything. And now it should mostly be working. So let's just see what happens if we go to three. I can spin them in both directions. It goes, it works. And boom, it all rotates. So it actually works. And this is the proof that the uh, all of this logic works as well. Because I did some uh, back and forth rotation just to see if it actually added and subtracted this like it should, as you can see. Um, if you want to, you can actually output the um, the numbers to the screen, so you can always see the... yeah, 3, 2, 4. Now it's not working. Okay, I was a bit hasty on the logic part there. And if you want to check if it works uh, in just one direction, you just go spin them in one direction and see if anything happens. One direction does nothing. And the other direction three two four. So subtracting works, adding for some reason doesn't. Let's see what's happening here. You want to add um, oh yeah, we never reach the remote events unless we go to the spinny part. That's the problem. So, hmm, we could probably have all of them going here. It's a bit messy, but. Yeah, let's just do that right now. That's the reason it wasn't working before. If I would have spun them, it would have all worked out, I think. Like if you went from... This should make it all work. It looks like crap, but it was the fastest fix I thought of. And so now it should all be working. Whoops, I'm not going to use that one. Or I shouldn't anyway. I'm sorry if I used it in the last one. I probably did. So, three, two, and four. Yay, it works. It's a kind of magic. Um, okay, so this obviously looks like shit, but hey, it works. I might upload a, a better looking version, uh, but this is what you get in the video anyway. I will be uploading both the uh, the starting version and the finished version uh, so you can play around with it on your own um, it might not be perfect but it's a working kind and again like I said if you want to do the ten-sided thing if you're a better modeler than I am and can make sort of ten-sided thingies which should be really easy and then just adding a texture to them you can do this really easily Again, you change the 4 here to a 10. You don't even have to change the downward ones um, because obviously you're going from 1 to 0 and then you change the int to 10 instead. Um, so you change that, you change the matinee instead of rotating 90 degrees, you change the um, the angle snapping at the bottom here. I'm sorry again, I went out of the screen, but it's at the bottom so that you're rotating, rotating 36 degrees instead. Um, in Dishonored they have much better looking animations. They go basically past the point and then back a bit, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so here is a simple version of the puzzle and again to change the combination you just change the compare ints here on the remote event. Thanks for watching, I hope you like this video and if you have any sort of ideas you want me to do, just leave a comment down below.
Thanks for watching.